Hi everyone, I'm Carla. And I'm Lanes. And together, we're the After Deck. We chat about the latest Below Deck episodes each week. Let's dive in, Lanes. Can't wait. Cheers, Lanes. Cheers, Carla. Welcome to Wednesday. Thank God, it's halfway. I feel like this week's dragged for me. Mine's gone really quick. Yeah, well, you fucked off to Sydney, didn't you, and had a lovely time. (laughs) I did. (laughs) All right, so we're doing Below Deck Med Season 9, Episode 6, Running After Time. And in this episode, Joe makes a sharp right turn in the stew triangle. Asia continues to steer the interior, while Sandy hones in on Ian. Welcome to our new Chief Stew on the Patreon, Julie. Hi, Julie. Nice to have you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we start with another laundry chat. Yeah, we're still there. The laundry's featured heavily this season. <laughs> and isn't it funny, especially how Bree started in the laundry? <laughs> she just can't escape She it. never gets out of the fucking laundry. It's 9.55 and we're back with Ellie lecturing Bree on the lack of experience she has. And Bree says something to her about, well, that's how you're making me feel like... Something, was you it make a, me feel dumb and it hurts sometimes. Ellie comes back with, well, that's your lack of insecurity. Yeah, she's. I never said that. And then I think we get the word victimhood again. Yeah, Ellie just walks off. Yeah, don't come at me with some goddamn bullshit. I'm done. She's off up the stairs. I can't. Let's just keep going because there's so much more. We don't um, want to get stuck in the laundry all night. Not in the first two seconds of no. the pod. Well, we need to do a bit more because then we get the cut screens between the two. Yeah. Like Bree's like, she's power tripping. She won't validate my feelings. Ellie's like, she needs to realise I'm her supervisor. She doesn't listen. This supervisor bullshit. She still says I'm her supervisor as well as Aisha. Not correct. As Not correct. Aisha has advised us. Yeah. It's 10 o'clock. Breakfast. It's going to be lobster eggs Benedict. Cook to order. Jono is going to make these eggs fresh. And they look bloody great, I have to say. I agree with you because we've had Lobster Benedict on the show a few times recently from chefs. Yes. And we were both like, I don't want Lobster fucking Benedict. Mm. Jono's is the first one that I thought I'd try that. Yeah. And the extra lobster is a good touch. Very good. I would like it in a different bowl, but anyway. He he says to us, look, I know my job is still on the line, but so far, so good. I'm hanging in there. Very much so on the line, Johnny. Sandy is on the line and she's teetering. She's not sure which way she's going to go. She's checking that normal line every day. <laughs> so they're going to a cave at Moni Island. Yeah. I love that we're seeing this new stuff. This is good, isn't it? Because we've finally got an outing and it's different. And it's not a beach picnic. It's not a fucking beach picnic. It <laughs> is different. I like it. Peacock isn't sure, though, about the water. Is Peacock going to get wet? Because Peacock can't get wet. She can't get her peacock wet. I love that she calls her hair Peacock. Yes. Because it's so totally a peacock. It's like it's got its own identity. Yes. I did notice, though, here at breakfast that Aisha was giving instruction to Ellie. Now, I obviously, we've watched the whole episode, but I've noted this before. Yeah. We get to that bit. So I was like, she says, put the cutlery out before the guests come up and can you do the water and juice? I feel like a second stew should be onto that without instruction. Mm, You would think, being a superior and all. And striving to be. Sorry, a supervisor. (laughs) (laughs) No, that was a very good faux pas. Um, And striving to be a chief. Yeah. Anyway, moving on from breakfast, Ian wakes up. As the camera is on him, he's hitting his face. I guess just to wake himself up. Mm -hmm. Nathan and Joe are upstairs discussing why they're pumping up these like floating pontoons pontoons on the main deck. And I thought that was odd too because it's out of place. It's extra work. You're dragging it up, pumping it up and dragging it back down. Never seen it before. And totally ugly if you're like a guest walking around there like you just see these massive fucking things just there. Just unnecessary extra work. Uh, the result was that Ian doesn't want them doing it on the swim platform. Don't know why. So they're doing what they're told. Yeah, by their bosun. Then we see Ellie checking in with Joe in the crew mess. She's like, what's going on with this sleepover, Joe? Joe's all like, mm, I don't know. All I know is I have to put a mattress on the floor. Ellie comes straight in with it. Well, it's nothing to do with me. 
She's just creating drama for no reason. She's playing the victim. And then she's like, shut the fuck up. She walks out and says, it's nothing to do with me. And I'm (laughs) like, you sure? And Joe, why didn't you say something different there? Like, I'm disappointed in that. Oh, what he says later when they're on the boat is even worse. Yes. So the anchor is, yeah, the anchor's getting caught. Um, This wingless is still giving Joe some grief, but Nathan's in there flaking the chain. We haven't heard that for a while, flaking the chain. I reckon that could be a great, you know, euphemism for taking a shit. Oh. I'm just going to go flake the chain. (laughs) Don't you reckon that sounds good? (laughs) I'm not going to use it, but if anyone else is going to, please let Carla know. Anyway. Aisha comes in from serving the guests and then Ellie is straight on the attack. It's mid-service, Ellie. It's just constant this episode. This Bree situation, she's sleeping on the floor in the boys' cabins. She's telling me I'm belittling her. Queen. (laughs) All she picks out of that is, are you? Yeah. And I think that's shocked Ellie a bit. Yeah. She wanted to talk about the sleeping on the floor bit. Yeah. Not that she's saying I'm belittling her. I am not. I am not that person. I will not stand for that. Let's flash back to her saying it's her lack of boating experience and her insecurities. Is that belittling? She, she doesn't do that though, does she? Aisha's just like, look, I know it's hard. you got to get on with it. We'll talk about it after charter. And I love what she says here to camera. She's like, you know, there's this rivalry that's circling around Joe, but you can't discipline people out of emotions. Amazing. Like, and where did she get that from? She needs to write a book. If she didn't take it from some leadership book, and she thought of that on her own, she needs to write a book about it. I'm going to take it and use it. Because that is so fucking accurate. Yeah, it's true. She's like, let's just focus on the guests because that's what we're here for. Well, Ellie is not. She's still talking about the belittling comment as a guest is coming up for oh. breakfast. And Aisha's just is like, good morning. You know, how, just, how are you? Do you have a good sleep? Like just fucking Ellie, just do your job. Sandy's doing her job. Yeah, she's Fuck, right. I loved this. She's up there and she does six micro mini jumping jacks. Quick though. Oh, so quick. Her arms don't even extend (laughs) to the top of her head and her legs are like going tick, 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 tick. She does six and she's like, oh, yeah, don't fucking, don't fucking hate exercise. I was like, Sandy, you are so me in this moment. (laughs) I don't mind exercise, but I prefer to lie down and do it. I definitely don't want to do jumping jacks. No, you're a Pilates gal. And if I did jumping jacks, that's exactly how I'd do them, <laughs> badly. And quickly. And quickly. Like by doing them quickly. You're done quicker. <laughs> it's efficient exercise. You feel like you've done it, but you've done a half ass job. <laughs> oh, anyway, it's 11.54. So accurate. Sandy shows Aisha the slit in the cave. It's very vaginal. Isn't it? Isn't it? I love how Sandy's like pointing to it. Here's the slit in the cave, Aisha, where the guests shall be going. (laughs) I'm surprised Aisha didn't say, oh, my God, it's so vaginal. (laughs) She's so like that, isn't she? But she's professional. Especially with Captain Sandy. So Ellie will go with the guests because thumb. I'm so sad for Aisha. She would have been great on this excursion. Yeah, she would have been. Aisha's checking with Ellie that she's right to go and Ellie... By the way, oh. Bree's also mentioned that she's been fired from a boat before for causing too much drama. That's what she says to Aisha. That is not what Bree says. No, I've got what Bree says. Tell us what Bree says. She actually says, on my last boat, I was going through some personal stuff that affected everyone, so I had to go. Not quite the same thing, Lane. Very different. Like, who's the snake now? <laughs> oh, the snake a lot. <laughs> Aisha just shuts it down again. I'm sorry, we're on charter. Can't deal right now. But every time Aisha says that, Ellie's like, I know, I know, we focus on the guests. We need to focus on the guests. Like as if she's affirming what she's already been doing, but she actually hasn't been doing that. Yes. You're not doing that. You're focusing on tearing Brie down and getting your narrative out there. Exactly. (laughs) Fucking pissing me (laughs) off. Anyway, Nathan gives Gail a huge hug. She says she needed a hug, so he gave her one. This hug is so hard that he cracks her sunglasses on her chest. (laughs) And she's like, oh, that's where they were. I really liked that. I want them to get together. I know you do. I can see it. I can feel it. I know. I can. Yep. It's going to happen. 
Do you want to know what we talk about after each episode? Well, come on over to the Patreon because there you can get early ad-free episodes plus our bonus weekly wrap-up show. We love our Patreon community. Click the link in the show notes and come and join us. See you there. Righto, these guests are ready to go. Yeah, they're waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Joe's like, we'll be at least 20 minutes. Sandy's like, what the fuck? Why? And then she's off. Yep. She sees the floating dog on the deck and she's like, what the fuck is this doing here? That shouldn't be here. Put it down there. Get him in the water. Joe tries to say, sorry, I was told. Even though in his tone you can tell he was like, I know, Sandy. I know, Sandy. You're <laughs> right. He, I'm fucking wrong. He was told. Like that's his whole yep. demeanor. And she's like, get him in. And he's like, yes. Yes, I was right. <laughs> Ian, Ian, please come to the swim platform. <laughs> he's just getting up. Yeah, he don't give a shit. It's 11 o'clock. He gets ready pretty quickly and he gets down to the deck to see Sandy. Mm. She says, get him in, get him in. And then the engineer is on the tender and Ian says out loud, no, no, well, Captain didn't want it like that, so we've got to do it like this. Sandy's right up, just, yep. up, just above him, listening to it all. Yep. God, I would have wanted to say something. She doesn't, though. She just goes, hey, come on, they're still waiting. Get him in. Yep. Fuck, Ian, you got to watch these boats. Sandy's always listening. He's got an excuse for everything. Hasn't he? I wanted to get them off the boat quickly. We've never seen a, them step from the swim platform into a tender. No. And sorry to sound like a broken record, has he not watched the fucking show? Oh, it's hard to say. <laughs> we know because we watch. Yeah. <laughs> and we continually learn for Pete. Yes. What was the other one last week? Well, some things don't stick. Uh, locker. The, b- the bosun's the b- locker? The, no, the, the bow... The depths of the bow. Yeah, where she wanted Bree to sleep. Right. So guests are looking bored. They look like they're in a doctor's office waiting to be called for an appointment. I don't know. How long have they been waiting, Lance? Did you do the time on that? Well, it was 12.30. They're in the main salon waiting. We we go back to it. It's, it's about 12.45. So they're waiting for about 20 minutes. Like Joe said, we'll be about 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, they're all starting to say things like, come on, I'm ready to get this show on the road. Like, What I'm not understanding is like this has happened a couple of times now. Guests have been waiting for the activity. Why is that? Why are we not waiting until the deck team are ready to say we're ready in 10? Let the guests know they're ready in 10. Yeah, I mean, good point. We don't really know, but I'm assuming there's a one-word answer and it's Ian who either has not communicated or not met the time frame or hasn't organised his team well enough. Yeah. Because Aisha wouldn't stitch him up and say, she doesn't want the guests waiting. No, she doesn't. She wouldn't say the guests will be here at 11 if it's really 11.20. She just plucks a number out, yeah. And also they were all sitting in the same preference sheet meeting. They all would have worked out their plan. Why does Mm. Aisha have to micromanage Ian's time management? To make sure that he's coordinated yeah. with her. She's all coordinated. But we can see in this episode that she has to. Woo! Ian's not doing anything. Nothing. To help them load the tender. He's just standing there. Yeah. And then Aisha says, from the upper deck, the guests are ready. And Ian's like, well, they can come. I know, it's so bad. Fuck. He says it to no one in particular. He doesn't use his radio. No. Nah. And Aisha's like, oh, you've really, you're really starting to fuck me off now. She's um, like. Well, come and get them or do you want to tell them? <laughs> what we've noticed with Ian is he doesn't have initiative. So if given an instruction, he does just that. No more, no less. You ask me to get the tender, the tender's here. Yeah, he is deck and deck alone and the tips just happen. Yeah, he needs to be a, a lead deckhand mm. because he, he'd be given an instruction and he would follow through with that and great. Done. The guests are in and away and Sandy's down there talking to Ian. Finally. Ian, I want to get quicker than this. <gasps> the nerve. He says, well, you changed my plan. Can you see Sandy's bristles? Just bristling? Not enough for me. Oh, she says, yeah, well, it wasn't working, so let's go with the system that works. I love that she says plan too. Your plan wasn't working. Yes. <laughs> And what does he say in response? Cool. 
copy. She can see right oh. then. She's like, fucking wait. Yeah. I'm calling you to the bridge later and we're going to fucking sort this shit out. Yeah, I was like, when he did that, cool, copy. I was like, yes, Ian, you just <laughs> fucked yourself over. You just completely grabbed an eggplant and shoved it up your ass. Oh, did, did he now? <laughs> <laughs> just got fucked. Oh. They get over to the vagina slip. No one really wants to get their hair wet. So they've managed to coordinate this situation where they're on like little floaty things so Peacock doesn't need to get wet. Yes. How um, how did Ellie get in the water? Fucking hell, this was hilarious. <laughs> She's like, I don't know what to do with the flippers and the marks, so he must have helped to get them on. And then he ever so slowly lowers her down into the water and then plop, she's away. Just jump. That was an odd thing to see someone who's a yachty, and they all are, interior or deck team, they're all yachties. We've had a decky who couldn't swim before lanes. Yeah, but he wasn't like that. She can swim, but you can still get yourself off a boat into the water. You don't need to be lowered down like you're. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But Gail getting her out was even funnier. (laughs) She just yanked her out. Doesn't it look amazing? Oh, the water is crystal clear. There's only one other boat there too. It's so great. We should go. Mate. To the vaginal slip. I'd love to go into a vaginal (laughs) slip. That is what I want to see. I don't want to see a beach picnic. I want to see where they are and different locations like that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, so back on the boat, what's Ian doing now? He's been a dick. Is he bitching about his captain to his... uh, Lower deckhand? Yep. Is that what we do, Lance? No. He says something like even if I'd done it a different way, it still wouldn't be right. Yep. Mm. He's always got an excuse, doesn't he? He's not good at um, receiving feedback, criticism or taking accountability. I think I said it. (laughs) I think you did. (laughs) I made a jingle. Uh, Sandy has years of experience over him. And you're not going to listen to that oh. and learn when she tells you something? I don't even think you can put them into the same category. You can't. But I'm like, why aren't you learning from this woman? Yeah. Why aren't you listening to her notes? Just if she gives you something and says something to you, you listen to that. Yes, Captain. Yeah. Yeah, it's baffling. We're back in the water and Ellie finally reaches the cave. No one's there. She's trying. I'll give her that. And this is where they all finish their trip and they're off back Ready on the boat. Uh, Ellie in one photographer. She's still coming out of the cave. Yeah, did you see she looks straight to camera? Yeah, and she's like, oh, God, you want me filming this? And then she gets to the boat. Gail just reefs her up <laughs> off the side by her life vest. Yeah. <laughs> she's like a helpless guppy. <laughs> like she's not even using her hands someone, to get herself onto the boat. She's just like. Someone on Instagram. <laughs> I know. The put, minion? The, yeah, put a side-by-side shot of Ellie coming out of the water in a minion. <laughs> it was funny. But how strong's Gail? Fucking She's just reef a human out of the water. Yeah. She's been carrying around blocks of steel. <laughs> but she's practically a superwoman. Aisha's in the galley with Jono. <laughs> I was like, did I just hear that? Fuck Aisha. Jono, though, that could have gone so pear-shaped. He was just like, oh, was that? She's like, yeah, dangerous. And he was like, I just did one too over there. Don't go over there. <laughs> really stinky one. <laughs> Eggy. I, Eggy. I like this for them. <laughs> yeah. The chief stew and the chef need to have fun. Yeah, exactly. And now we, we get a split screen between Aisha chatting to Bree and Ellie chatting to Joe on the tender. Kind of about the same thing. How fun. Ellie starts with Joe. I hope you don't believe the shit that all these people are saying about me belittling people. This is where Joe says, all I know is there's a girl coming into my cabin crying and moaning. Is that true, Joe? Is that the whole story, Joe? I'm so annoyed that he said that. It's so false. How did she come into the cabin, Lanes? Joe invited her into the cabin. Yeah. She didn't come in crying and moaning. No, she came in skipping and happy. (laughs) She loved the sleepovers. Yeah. So then we cut over to Asia and Brie. And Asia again, straight to the fucking point. I love it. Why are you sleeping in there? 
And Brie says a few different things here. Aisha immediately hones in. Are you doing it to prove a point to Ellie? No. She says there, no, I tried talking to her, but it didn't go well. Yeah. And Aisha says, squash it after charter. We'll talk about it. But I suggest you don't sleep in there anymore. It'll fire Ellie up. You can't affect their sleep and their routine. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. What's happening on the tender? Oh, meanwhile, Ellie tells Joe, well, you know, I wanted to pursue things with you, but. She builds it up with, how would you feel if Nathan was sleeping in somebody's cabin like, oh, Joe is like, I don't feel safe. And Joe's like, oh, I would hate that. I would hate that. So she's got him. Yeah, it's not the same situation at all. No, because Bree's not saying that. This is where she goes on about finding him attractive. Yeah, and she says she wanted to pursue things with him, but <laughs> does Joe say to Ellie or does he say to Camera that he feels bad about getting with Bree? No, Joe says to her, you could have told me. And then he says to Camera, I do feel bad about getting with Bree. Who wouldn't go there with Ellie? And Lanes, didn't we say this last week? Mm-hmm. He's transparent as fucking paper. Mm-hmm. Wait, is paper transparent? Uh, depends on he's what GSM. As, he's transparent as fucking glass. Yes. They're butting heads, but I'm the cherry on top. Oh. It's just shit. So back to Brie and Aisha. Brie finishes off with, well, you know, she also, Ellie also has different times to me. So Aisha's like, oh, fuck, that's yachting, babe. Yeah, it's and true. If you can't sort your shit out, I'll have to make some changes. I would have liked Aisha to have said something like that to Ellie because from what we saw, she was just like, let's talk about it after charter. But to Brie, she's like, I'm going to have to make some changes if you don't sort this out. Yeah, specifically and Ellie's the about one, the sleeping in yeah. the cabin. But Ellie's been the one bitching about Brie the whole episode. I agree. I wanted Aisha to talk more to Ellie too, but every time Ellie tried to talk to her about it, they were mid-service. True, yeah. Or there were guests there. The guests were off the boat. Yes. Aisha and Brie had a chance to have a four-second conversation. I think that's why she went. Yes, yeah. But I see your point. I think Aisha also knows when you've got someone who's a bit of a loose cannon, (laughs) you might not deal with them in the same way as somebody who is more even-tempered, mm. like our children, Lance. <laughs> Where's more wine? <laughs> so the guests are back and they're relaxing with the champs and one of them asks Aisha, so Ali <laughs> works in interior, right? Pretty obvious, yes. <laughs> and then, you know, Aisha's like, yeah, I hope she was okay. And it's Trishel. She said she struggled a little bit but she's a trooper. Like I was proud of her. I don't want to be proud of someone who's supposed to be looking after me in the water. It's calm water. But imagine us when we went to that island and we had someone from the company who couldn't properly help us if we needed it. Should she have sent Brie instead of Ellie or should they have taken two deck and let them surf? I just think that they should have taken two deck. Gail's great with – Gail did most of that. Mm. Gail could could have served as well. Yeah. Ian tells Nathan to go and clean the crew mess, which he does, and that makes Sandy really happy. Mm -hmm. She's happy to see that happen. Uh, And now the guests are on the skis, and um, Ian says to make sure you keep eyes on them. (laughs) Roger. Haven't we had this issue before, though? Like why? Who was down there? Do you? It was Gail. Just Gail again? I think so. Gail worked all day. I didn't see Gail take a break. No. Aren't we supposed to have two deck watching? I thought so. Well, according to Sandy, we're supposed to have someone in the fucking tender following them around on the jet skis. <laughs> That's true. I forgot about that. Oh, God. Oh, no. The mix up with the polo. Bree doesn't know where the, the initials, initials are on the polos. Sorry, I'm eye rolling because yeah. it's not that fucking hard. That's what Asia says, too. Like, just, what are you guessing? She's like, well, show me where the initials are. But also it's Charter 3. Laundry 101. So, like, is this just your first with the crew? Two years she's been on boats. Not full season. Oh, God. Anyway, that wasn't great for her. Sandy's on the swim platform now. She says to Gail, you see how the skis are all in their way? What you can do is just run a line, zip them up to the line, and away you go. And I'm like, yep. Sandy is now teaching Deck 
Yes. Seeing how much they know because she knows Ian is losing his grip. Did he have a grip? Well, she didn't know before, but she's coming to learn. And then Gail tells us about her fucking injury. Superwoman dropped a whole (laughs) plank of steel on her leg. Oh, my God. What was your reaction when you saw that photo? Ah. I was like, (gasps) I was like, oh, there was no warning. (laughs) I'm surprised she didn't break her leg. Mm. Like that was horrific. And then we see the scar from the seven, 16 stitches and a skin graft. That would have fucking hurt. Oh, and did you see her on the boat? She looked in pain, but she was like composed. She was annoyed because she was like, fuck it. I just wanted to do my job and now I've got this stupid injury. So, so brave. I don't mean that it was stupid. I mean, that was her self-talk. And she was back within a year. Hectic. She's going to go places. Yes. Oh, Nathan's done the crew mess and Ian decides to give him a compliment on that. He says, but don't forget the microfiber because you can see the, I mean, fucking what, you got an eye for detail for the fucking bench top in the crew mess and the microfiber, but you can't. Have a bit more detail on the timing of the... (laughs) I think that my view is clear. (laughs) And if I say any more... Oh, Sandy's watching the deck team again, telling them what a good job they're doing. She's taking inventory. Yeah, she is. Mm. When she hovers, when she's out of that bridge, just know that it's not for a hello, Mm -hmm. all right? It's not for extra exercise. No, no. She's checking in on Jono. How are you going? That's not to see how he's going. No. Ellie checks with the guests and dinner will be 8.30. So she goes and tells Jono in the galley and then walks through the crew mess where Bree's eating her dinner. Ellie tells Bree that she should probably change into their nights, pull some plates for chef and I'll pull decor for dinner. Yeah, so she's put the plan in place. Aisha had already put the plan in place earlier when she said. She asked Ellie to do that. She did. So Ellie's just delegated down. And then nothing has happened. But no real, in- yes, she says pull some plates f- for chef, but it's no real, you pull the plates for chef, I'll do this. Because let's remember these people need finite instruction. Well, Aisha's coming to realise that. Yeah. So Aisha comes up and she's like, what What are you guys doing? Like why, why aren't the, the plates pulled? Like Bree's like, I don't know. Oh, we're blowing up balloons. <laughs> Aisha says, I don't know if Ellie's distracted or just not as capable as she lets on. She's trying to figure it out. It's not the first time we've seen this. No. I think it's more of a time management issue, like the dressing and stuff like that. Like she gets one thing in her head and she's like, I want to do this. Yes. And so everything else will go by the wayside. Yes. Aisha's like, well, we've got an hour, so let's let's go. Ellie's like, well, I can do everything in an hour. She shrugs her shoulders too. Yeah. Like as if I was just doing that. Yeah. So what are you going to do about it? Imagine if Bree spoke to her like that. Oh, there'd be hell to pay. You know? She says Bree's getting away with murder and I'm being put on the fucking stake. What murder and what stake? Like Bree is not getting away with any murder. So if we're going to, like, I'm wondering why victimhood is in Ellie's vocabulary so much and I feel like she is that. She puts herself in that victimhood place All of the time. Oh, the injustice. Can't stand injustice. (laughs) Just your job. You're not saving lives. People are going to pull you up on things if you don't do what was requested or ask why you haven't done it. Simple. pull your head in. Yeah. So Aisha now realises she's got to fucking micromanage these two. (laughs) And we're on to dinner. Classic Hollywood dinner. Jono's explaining fresh out of the sea, crunchy, juicy calamari. Yeah, fresh out of the sea, crumbed and fried. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I got that at Dougie's Fish Market the other day. Yeah. It needed, but it looked great. It just needed a bit of green. Yeah. Oh, this was a funny chat down on the swim platform. Yes. Joe wanting boy talk with Gail. Yep. First he wants girl talk. And Joe's like, so, you know, you're a girl, so, like, tell me what's happening here because it can't be anything to do with me. Oh, certainly not. Gail's like, well, you know, it's really hard because you don't have two sides of the story. But he's like, no, no, I do. I've got the two sides now. And now for the boy talk. Can I go for it with Ellie? My God. That's all that's on his mind is Ellie. She's like, well, you can. You can keep 
having sex with the person you're having sex with, which they haven't had sex to my knowledge, or you can cause issues, right, Gail? Voice of reason. I love her. She's just done the whole fucking beach stuff all day. She's pulled in all the toys. She's lined up all the jet skis. And now she's giving fucking girlfriend advice to Joe. Yeah. No, how to get out of the shit advice yes. and not get further in the shit. Yes, he doesn't take that though. No, he's like, mm, okay. Green so light? I probably could have sex with her, but just be careful. Yeah. I've got a green light from Gail, so I'm good to go. Yeah, Gail says it's okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she's a girl. Yeah. Dinner is served and the crew have a chat about the birthday song that they were going to do. Now, they had this chat about the birthday song in the preference sheet meeting. Joe wasn't in the preference sheet meeting. No, Joe wasn't. Well, whose um, job would it be to tell Joe? Oh, I don't know. It must be Aisha's. Yeah, probably Aisha. Doesn't she run the boat? Yeah. Yeah. Joe doesn't mind, though, only finding out that he's got to perform because he loves performing. But he does say, like, I'm going to need to practice. Like, I've only got dinner to figure this out. It's just happy birthday, Joe. Yeah, but we see you later. Ha, 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 oh, it's not ha, good. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, hang on, hang on. Do, 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 ha. It's the slowest happy birthday. And all I heard was Aisha. Anyway. Oh, it was like a funeral procession. <laughs> happy <laughs> heavenly birthday. <laughs> Wow, that took a turn, a sharp turn, a didn't it? A sharp turn. Guests are having their classy dinner and comparing boobs. We went from calamari to boobs pretty quickly. And Trishel has been in Playboy. When Aisha said, have I served her? Overserved her. Well, yeah, so she was talking about the primary being drunk, right? Yes. Okay, because I was like, wait, did Aisha work at the Playboy Mansion or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> Because the primary all of a sudden, I don't have the whole. She's like, got a girls out. She she does. And the, the husband, not he's happy. not impressed. And it looks like this happens a lot because she's going, so I'll do the splits. You want me to do the splits? He's like, no one wants you to do the splits. Anyway, she gets up and does it. I'm like, lighten up, Rich. She does the splits, but then she turns around and she does a Pilates 100. I was going <laughs> to say, like, you would know the move. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I don't like, find an issue with it. Like, she was having fun, Rich. Let her have fun. And if You're you in can... the Greek islands on a luxury boat with your mates. And if you can do the splits, do the fucking split. Marsha gets her up off the floor and takes her back to the table. Lucky Marsha's here, Mama Marsha. Um... <laughs> Mama Marsha. <laughs> I reckon we'd all need a Mama Marsha because, you know, last um, episode how the primary – complained about the steak and fair enough it looked boiled she's like she'll be right just give her a tequila shot yeah <laughs> Marsh is like more yeah, more like, we're all good we're all good Jono's happy with his dinner he's so happy he's going to put his little pussy to bed she has stepped up but now she needs sleep I messaged him what'd you say I said your pussy stepped up <laughs> what did he say and he goes ha ha yes <laughs> well she did so then Aisha ushers them down to the piano room for the terrible singing. I thought when we heard Joe practicing and Nathan singing, I was like, hang on, can Nathan actually sing? This might actually work. I thought that was really nice that they were both down there together just chilling with a piano. He could kind of sing. And then when it came to the group singing, it was. He was washed. It, no, 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 hang on. Hey. What? Nathan can sing. He was washed out. It was terrible. By the vibrant Kiwi. It was terrible. <laughs> It was like watching paint dry. Horrendous. I was just worried that they were going to go into, why was she born? (laughs) I think that's an Australian thing though. No, you know what's an Australian thing? Her pip hooray. Yes. So the crew go on to do other things. The guests go to bed and we're at morning. Brie had a good sleep in her own cabin and she's decided she's going to stay away from Joe. She is like, you know what, the only way I'm going to get through this is to separate myself from Joe and then as long as I say, yes, Ellie, yes, Ellie, life will return to normal. Yeah, I agree. Not wrong, Brie. Be the bigger person. Yeah, and I think Brie's better mates with Joe, obviously. Maybe Brie can also feel the vibe that Joe's not that interested. Yeah. Otherwise, wouldn't he have invited her into his bunk? Yeah. So the deck team, well, actually, it's Joe and Nathan. They're cleaning up the swim platform and they're getting ready to depart. And they've got this big hose. Yeah, what are they doing with the hose? Um, like winding it up. It's a fucking mess. But this is what I loved. He's like, I'll meet you halfway. I'll meet you halfway. 
I'll meet you. <laughs> I'll meet you halfway. No, I'll meet you halfway. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Right at the borderline. Is where we want to stay. Thank you, Black Eyed Peas. You. <laughs> I love that they had that. They were doing that. They just kept going back and forth. They were like ping ponging. And Nathan's like, I said, I'll fucking meet you halfway. <laughs> no, I'll meet you halfway. And then the producers are like, I mean, how do you know if it's a bromance? They're like, not even a fucking question. That's in full effect. It's a. It's spiritual. Joe's floating and then Nathan catches him and then they both float around the boat together. It sounds romantic. They love it. This is what I want. I want a bromance. I want more of them. Less yes. drama. Yes. Yes. Less Joe with girls, more Joe with Nathan. Agree. So they go up to pull the anchor because Captain says, like, start hauling immediately. Yeah. Copy, Captain. I'm glad Nathan is there. Because I'm like, Joe and the wingless do not get along. <laughs> we need Nathan on this wingless. <laughs> but fuck, there's trouble with the wingless. So we get all the fucking engineers. You engineer, you engineer. Here, you go down there. Oh, look, they work. And then we get Sandy talking all this fucking boat shit that I, all I got from that was we can use the other lang- anchor to lift that anchor. Yeah. <laughs> and just when, Carla, just when we thought we could work on below deck with any training. <laughs> Sandy lost me. <laughs> Your deck, I've always said I'm interior. I could figure interior out. It's our day job interior. Right. Well, if I watched it another five times, I would probably be able to get it. Worst case, Sandy says, is we'll just leave the anchor. Well, it's now 10 a.m. and Sandy radios Ian. Ian, our windlass is not working on the bow. Deck crew, can we please get Pierce in the tender? That's the second officer. Jumps on the tender. What happens though? Oh, battery's flat. Someone left the fucking tender on, didn't they? (laughs) Mine's is cheering. (laughs) In the middle of the drum, we've got lobster bennies served again with extra lobster. (laughs) Why would we do the same thing again? Well, I thought that too, but they did seem to like it. I know, they didn't care, but I'm like, I wouldn't want that the same thing two days in a row. So the guests are starting to pack. One of them's got a flight this afternoon. Tender's dead. The wingless is dead. And Sandy says, Ian, who was the last one on the tender? Yeah, that'd be me. But you know what? Again, there's an excuse. What does he say? Oh, I was refueling and then I got distracted. Oh, I'll take the blame. For what? For something you actually fucking did. It's your fault. A hundred cement. It's your fault. <laughs> Some <laughs> wolf, wolf. <laughs> Fix the battery. Wolf, wolf. <laughs> Did that motivate you, mate? Did it? <laughs> and while you're on the tender fixing the flat battery that you fucked, can you just make sure you microfiber that? Yeah, I don't like seeing streaks. <laughs> it's tray importante. So we're trying to pull up the anchor with the other wingless. Did you hear what Nathan said here? Mate, at this point I was just fucking lost. It's a very small, thin orange rope. Nathan says, watch it snap. He's Nostradamus. Not more than two seconds later, it fucking snaps. Well, what the fuck? It's like a tiny, it's a shoelace. And Joe's like, it's snapped, Sandy. That's what you just heard. It's a snapping. She's like, pull the brake, pull the brake, stop the anchor, stop the anchor. And then I knew it, Lance. <sighs> you, you said it last week. I said two minutes before the end of the episode, we'll see this happen and we'll have to wait till next week to see it play out in full. What do you think is going to happen? We're going to leave the anchor or we're going to fix it? I don't know about the anchor, but I'm worried about the guests getting their trip to Paris. There's always a tender. Oh, no. Well, some, the tender's fucking flat. That's right. There's not always a tender anymore. No, not when Ian's the boatswain. But he took the blame. <laughs> Right, well, we've got an anchor situation to sort out. We've got a crew night out, and I think it, we will see some action. Oh, yes, please. All right. Well, see you all next week. Bye, guys. Bye. And now we get a scrut. A cr- <laughs> what do we get? We get a scrut cream. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even fucking write it down. I just texted you. Meet me halfway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, some eyed brilliant. It's Joe and... Nathan, they're deflating and getting ready to (laughs) depart. (laughs) If you'd like to follow us on Insta, come over to theafdeck.pod or send us an email on theafdeckpod at gmail.com. We'd love to know what you think about the show and what you'd like us to cover for upcoming seasons. Bye.